So the relationship between a Tim and Yugi, probably the most two famous and notable characters in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. Now I'm joined with Dimsy's domain. Please introduce yourself. Yes, let's talk about a Tim and Yugi. It's gonna be a great discussion to talk about how they, you know, the general relationship and how it grew and how, you know, how it just progressed. Yeah, let's talk about it. Now we did a video, a debate that initially started all this. It's called Is Yugi the True King Games? Link down below in a few other videos that me and Dimsy did. But pretty much we're gonna be talking about the progression between a Tim and Yugi's relationship in Duel Monsters. Now, I'm going to be talking about the manga side of things, and Dimzy is mostly going to be talking about Duel Monsters anime, and I'll be joining in here and there. But the thing is, in the early manga, Kaz didn't know what he was going to do. He was just doing random stuff here and there. But once he got to that seventh volume, he's decided to switch it up, and he figured out the base of the Yu-Gi-Oh! plot. When we first see Yugi's Yami's introduction, and we see him through the random games and the shadow duels, Yugi doesn't know of a Tim. He, he, he doesn't know that someone's taking over him. We see that many times throughout each chapter of the manga. But the thing is, it's it's interesting because Yugi, as he's the host of the body, he doesn't realize that someone's taking over this person, this little individual, and it helps his character grow. Now, do you want to talk about the whole baseline of how a Tim is guidance in a sense? Exactly. Um, He is Yugi's greatest teacher. He's his best example. And you know when you have a teacher, how? Do, what's the best way for them to teach is through example. You know, you have, they go through, let's say, a math problem, yeah? Maths problem. They go through the problem and then they show you how to do it. Whereas Attempt inhibited Yugi's body, showed him how to make friends, how to duel, how to do all of all of these essential things within this Yu-Gi-Oh universe. And here's the thing: it started off with the whole uh, Yugi's looking up. Yugi's looking up at Attempt in sheer admiration, because at the same time Yugi knew absolutely nothing about Attempt. That's because Attempt knew nothing about himself anyway. So he's truly just admiring the characteristics of Attempt, and likewise in the manga. As as you said, um, the characteristics of a Tem was vastly different, and it contrasted Yugi's own characteristics, and that's how. Cause look, they were both extremes. One was extremely timid, one was extremely confident. And as it progressed, especially in the anime, Yugi and a Tem both reached some sort of middle ground where they both learn of each other. But mainly, Yugi was learning of a Tem, but a Tem was also learning of Yugi in the sense of what it means to have friends, what it means to be a good friend, what it means to be compassionate. I guess the compassion side is more pronounced in the manga side of things. I guess you can tell me about. You can you can speak about that more. Wasn't Atem more savage? <coughs> How was the relationship in the beginning? So first of all, they didn't know about each other. They didn't have a relationship. Y Yami just came in and he saved people and he basically killed people through shadow games. The thing is, what I noticed when I was reading the manga is that Kaz he tried his hardest, and I mean hardest, to show the con the contrast of characters. Now, if you read the manga, now read the manga in the sense of a reviewer. You'll, you'll notice that w when there are dark scenes, right? When there are dark scenes of Yami, for example, for Yushia, right? They have that death match about the knife and about the money who stabs it. Prior to all that just dark, dis just dark things that Yugi would do or Yami would do, Yugi was doing all these pure hearted things not for stopping Yushio, even though Junochi and Honda bullied Yugi. He stopped them from attacking him. Cass tried his hardest, even in f uh, future chapters as well. For example, one of the chapters in volume one of the Yu Gi Oh manga, when this prisoner escapes he escapes from prison and he's running away from the police and he gets kind of bored right he comes into the shop that Taya works at right he comes in and he takes her as hostage but the thing is do you really think Yugi would have done anything no he actually wouldn't he wouldn't have done anything that's when Yami comes in and Yami comes in and I think in that chapter he cements himself as a badass to the viewers because this is what he does right he defeats him in the most badass manner ever Yami's there chilling the thing is this dude has a gun to Anzu's head he has a gun to Anzu's head. Yami's just chilling there on the back and he has his shadow game and he defeats him. He saves Anzu as well. Another very notable moment is in chapter 2, I'm pretty sure called the Lying Eye, right? Thing is, this person, his name's head director and he has an assistant, his name's Fujeta. They're hosting this TV show and they need a vessel of some sort to produce the show. So they use Yugi. And this is a very good example to show the compare and contrast of the characters. Yugi comes in, right, and he looks at the car and he's like, oh, wow, I can't believe that's it. And then the head director's like, oh, we're going to use Yugi as the pawn, basically. Fujeta's the assistant director, and he has to basically lure Yugi into this certain part of the school. And they pay somebody to beat him up and they bully him, right? Yugi wouldn't have done anything. He would just took the beating. But that's when Yami comes in. Yami comes in and he switches the whole scenario. He basically hunts down. He hunts down the head director 
at the place where they're gonna distribute the film and stuff. He comes down and he defeats him in a shadow duel as well. The thing with Yugi and Yami's relationship is that they're both kind, right? They're both doing it for justice, but they have different ways of approaching it. Now, Yami has this way of approaching it in dark ways, and Yugi has this way of, oh, don't harm anyone, don't do this. It's not the right way, just let it be, and I'll do it. For example, chapter 3, I'm pretty sure, where Hakuna-san and this music guy, he's like, oh, you better sell the tickets, and he's, he's hitting weak people, like Yugi and Hakuna-san. They're both very low-confident people. Yugi has to sell these tickets in a certain amount of time. Yugi tries to sell it to Hakuna-san, and Hakuna-san's like, Yugi, I have the tickets as well. They both had it, but you know what Yugi does? At a pure kind and he's like, Hakuna son, give me the tickets and I'll sell them for you. Would Yami do that? What do you think, Dimzi? No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. Um, and that's the thing. Um, Yugi was very naive to start off, and yes, that was his trait. I look. If I were to cap off my thoughts and just uh really, these are this this is what I think of the relationship between Yugi and Yami or Yugi and Atem is that it starts off with a teacher-like student relationship, and then as a time goes on, when Yugi's far more aware. Um, actually, no. It's like you know how when when you beg someone hey can you take my place and, and so on so and do the test for me that's how it began where Yami just he just interrupted Yugi's life at these very stressful times and he just took over and he done his stuff like you said when he's saving uh, Teya but then it became more like a teacher student relationship and then a little bit after that and this is what I think the relationship is right now it's a big brother little brother relationship although a term is 3,000 years older or 5,000 years older depending on the anime or the manga whatever inter interpretation you take <laughs> But it's a big brother, little brother relationship. And that's exactly where we are now. And by the end, it becomes a brotherly relationship where none are superior to each other because the same amount of respect that Yugi had for Atem from the beginning, Atem has that equal, if not more, respect towards Yugi. So it's a very symbiotic, brotherly, sibling-like relationship, which I think they develop through the course of what, a couple of years or so, throughout um, Duelist Kingdom, Battle City and all that. And especially um, through the... The memory games and that was the main main like nail in the coffin well not coffin because they have to go to the afterlife but that was the real personification of the actual relationship between Yugi and Atem I think yeah sibling relationship big brother little brother both with dodgy hair <laughs> now I, w I want to talk a little bit more about the the changing point the turning point of this relationship because all the way up right all the way up till Duelist Kingdom it's Yami Yami's helping out Yugi but that one portion right that one duel and I think you know what I'm talking about hmm. between Kaiba and Yugi. Kaiba puts his life at risk, right? And Yami's about to attack. He has, he doesn't care. He doesn't give two craps about Kaiba. Exactly. But y Yugi comes in and he stops the attack. Y do you, like, people, I don't think people realize how good of a turning point and how pivotal that is towards Atem's character. That's when Atem was starting to realize that like, what's going on and he's learning. That's when he thought to himself, let me start to learn from Yugi. In my opinion, that's when he's like, okay, I don't know nothing about this time period in, like, in terms of humanity and how people think so I'm gonna observe Yugi from now on and I'm gonna start taking a more closer look at things I can bring and dish out my own sense of justice however my justice could be the same could be classed as villainy to some and that's why it was that one duel that one act which made Atem reconsider his whole position but an another duel the Atem versus my duel right Yugi's off Yami's off he can't he's not winning the duel because in the English dub it's because Yugi's getting to his mind right because Yugi's holding him back but it was in Pegasus but the thing is Yami was off due to the fact that of the whole Seto Kaiba moment he didn't he didn't know that what he was doing was wrong all right mm. Yugi Yugi's holding him back and he's like Yugi I'll listen to you from now on all right we'll, we'll agree upon things that's when they that brotherly relationship develops and then another portion right after Duel's Kingdom ends right they have the aftermath they go through all this character development this insane character development and they're talking to each other they're like oh we'll listen to each other like in the Japanese version they call each other Aibo which is partner basically and that's basically what they are now i want to skip ahead to season five the final duel yeah the final moment the final change this is the most important challenge in all of yugi's life probably even for tim's life i think it's probably second behind of finding out who he is but the thing is this duel is so insane because you look at yugi right he's a little weak timid boy as you yep. say he, he doesn't he doesn't fit in society and he he watches his pharaoh throughout the well, five seasons or two three years and he develops his personality he develops his dominance and they're versing each other and he defeats the person he defeats his mentor do you want to expand more about yes that? it's just you know the the student um becomes the teacher he conquers the teacher and it wasn't more so yugi surpassed attempt 
which is what people seem to take from that they extrapolate that oh no Yugi has surpassed in his skills no 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 that's not the important thing it's the fact of their relationship that they are finally on equal terms as I said in the beginning of the video when I spoke that Yugi has always been looking up looking up it's at that duel where he can finally look him square in the eye on the same plane on the same level so when he defeated Atem it, it really did show and represent the fact that I have learned all that I need to thank you his gratitude he's, you know he's very very grateful for all the things that Yami that Atem because you know they found out the name etc that Atem mm -hmm. has shown him and taught him and now he's used the things that Atem has taught him specifically he's used the things which he's learned through observation and he beat and he defeated Atem and that was yes as you said now nah, in my opinion the most important point in all of Yu-Gi-Oh and especially for their for their relationship it became brotherly it became not just little brother big brother it became two brothers who are also partners who are on equal footing who are business partners who are equals in every regard possible they they really did cap off that little mini not that mini that little character arc between those two characters being Yugi and Atem now I'm not going to go into DSOD but the thing is from the trailers we get that realization that one scene of Yugi looking at Atem's deck and he thinks about him just imagine that right you you go through this journey with your quote-unquote partner and you lose him right that's probably also one of the most challenging things for Yugi yeah it's, it's that bond they created isn't it yeah the bonds basically destroyed it's destroyed physically but mentally uh, yeah. it's always there yeah, exactly the final and this is probably one of my favorite things discussed about the Yu-Gi-Oh GX that scene <laughs> right we see Yu-Gi all grown up he's he's moving on with his life this is 10 years in the future guys note that 10 years without a Tim 10 years he looks like a Tim which I kind of like I kind of like that he's taking up that throne taking up that look of being the next a Tim being his incarnation now do you want to talk more about that dude I guess we can really okay I'll quickly speak on this and then I'll plug in this massive video which you guys need to check out but in terms of Yugi becoming essentially a duplicate of Atem. We saw his arms. His arms are a little bit more muscular. He's more wise. He's he even even in that split second when he was interacting with Jaden, he took on the teacher role. He took on that mentor role, which was accustomed to uh, to him for Atem. You know, from day one, everyone thought, okay, Atem is the guy that teaches us everything. In GX, we saw that Yugi essentially is the teacher. He's the main teacher. He's like the granddaddy of all teachers right now. He's uh, revered. He's he's at such a high stature and you have to think about from how low and how um, timid this guy was to being the absolute greatest and especially in the past 10 years he done it all on his own all on his own and that was as I said it did cap off the character arc in the ceremonial duel but this was just the fruits of the the, the fruits of you know see sowing the seeds and growing this new tree this new tree that essentially is Yugi thank you very much Dimzy but the thing is I want you guys to check out Dimzy's video which will be going up around the same time as this video the relationship between yami bakora and bakora it will be linked down below so thank you very much for watching and have a great day